Hey everybody, Keith with PartsCounterGuru.com, back with another RV video. It is the off season as I film this, and there is no better time to do some RV maintenance than right now. Um, better to do it now than while we're trying to use it in the warm months. We actually use ours year round, but still don't quite use it as much in the cooler months. So if you've got a rough ride on your Class A, and in particular, I'm talking about the Ford F53 chassis. This is a gasoline engine chassis, engines in the front. Um, that's what's on this Thor, uh, or I should say that's what this Thor sits on. Uh, there's a lot of coaches that share this platform. It's a very popular gasoline engine platform on the Class A's. Um, and I've got a pretty rough ride, a pretty stiff ride in the front. And um, especially if the roads are a little bit rougher, it, you can really feel it in this thing. So I've got a potential solution for you. It's what's inside this box. Not only that, but I've got a tip for you that you can check that's absolutely free. You don't have to buy anything and it might be worth looking into if you're experiencing this rough ride. Even if you don't have that Ford F53 chassis, it's still something you might wanna hang around for. All that coming up right after this. All right, so you probably already guessed, but what's inside this box? Now, this is just one of many things that you can do to address that rough ride. Now, before I get into specifically what I went with, to be clear, what I'm talking about is the actual feel of the rough road and the things inside the coach that bounce up and down when you hit rough areas or potholes on the road. There's other issues that people complain about, like sway when you turn, um, just the, the wandering that can happen on the lane. All those are, are common uh, complaints, I guess you might say, that you hear of owners of these coaches out on the forums. But this particular video is set up so that we can talk about the actual rough ride. So those other things we'll get to later. This is one potential fix. And like I said, you've probably already guessed it, but we're gonna take a look at changing out the shocks. Now, these are Coney shocks. I'm gonna put a link to where I got these in the description. You can also check out our website at partscounterguru.com. These are specifically made for this Ford F53 chassis. Uh, make sure you check yours before you go out and buy, but uh, there's a lot, a lot of Class A's that use this chassis. There's some Tiffins that use it. There's Thor Motor Coaches that use it. Um, I believe there's some well, I, there's just a lot of stuff. I'm not thinking of all of it right now, but you know if you've got this chassis. So the, the factory shocks that come with this thing are so stiff. And what happens when you go over some rough road with the factory shocks on is they're very quick to recoil. So they're, they're very hard, to, uh, difficult to keep compressed. They wanna go right back into that fully extended position, okay? And where that becomes a problem is they're not as able to absorb the terrain changes without a full load in the front. So these shocks, by comparison, are slower to recoil. So, for example, when you hit that hole, the shocks will compress and they will stay down longer and they will be slower to come back up. So they're, they're going to do a better job of kind of ex absorbing that, that jolt, okay? Now, these in particular... Uh, and I checked with the guys, I'll, again, I'll put, I'll put the link out to where I got them for you. But these in particular, you don't need any special tools, so to speak, to keep them compressed. Because of the nature of these shocks, they like to stay compressed. You can literally put them on, compress them by hand, and you can do it by yourself. Uh, you don't have to lift the coach up. There's no special anything. You don't have to take the, the tires or wheels off. Um, you should be able to, now, if, once you take the old ones off, they are going to expand on you, so be careful there. And as always, we're going to want to exercise extreme caution when we do anything like this. Safety first, always and every time, everybody. So if you're not sure, if you've never done anything like this before, make sure you check and read all the descriptions, look through the requirements before you attempt it. That said, this video is going to be in a couple parts. And I'm gonna take you through the actual process of replacing them, and then we're gonna do a review on them after the ride test, after I take them out and I compare the difference, okay? Uh, had this coach for a couple years, very familiar with how it handles right now. And also, before we get to it here, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying where this is heading, 
you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button, ring the bell, leave us a comment. Tell us whether you want to see something else like this or you're interested in seeing some other things. We always like to, to read that feedback. So um, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so I'm actually going to take you around and show you if we can get good enough lighting here inside the coach. It's pretty dark, but you can see there is the top of my existing shock, right? And, oh, may not be able to get you there. Yeah, you can see it. There's a bolt down there at the bottom. So those two bolts are what we're going for. Um, and again, I'm gonna go after this with uh, the tools and I'm gonna tell you how it goes. But this is our job today. We're just doing the fronts. We're doing the left or, or the driver side and the passenger side. All right, guys, so promised you an update. This turned out to be easier than I expected. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm not trying out for a horror movie. I've actually got you with me here. I'm kneeling up inside underneath the front. So you can see right here is the wheel, right? And this is the shock mount right here, if I can get my light in position. Um, this is the shock mount right here on the low side, and there it is on the high side. So I've got this completely out. Now, here are, here were my biggest challenges, and these are things that you're probably going to have to watch out for. Uh, again, coach is about two years old, mentioned that. Um, I figured the bolts would be a little rusty and seized because I've driven it in the rain, and that's going to happen. And that was true, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I used a half inch socket, I used an adjustable wrench, and I used a breaker bar to get things loose. And I was able to do it by myself, and um, it wasn't bad. You can put a little PB blaster on them, or sorry, P blaster on them first if you're worried about that, it's not a bad idea. And then the other thing that I'll mention is these were standard sock, standard, you know, SAE sockets. And mine was a one and three sixteenths to break it loose. Now that's the nut size and the bolt head size. They were both the same. So I got this one off in about 10 minutes. Not bad at all. I'm about to put the new one on in its place and then we'll check status after I get them both done. Hey everybody, it's follow up time. Just wanted to come back to you after having put those shocks on and putting about a thousand miles of drive time uh, drive distance on it. So, a couple things to note. Number one, um, the porpoising or the swaying left to right is so much better and that's sort of an unexpected benefit. I didn't expect uh, to get that benefit out of it. As far as the stiffness in the ride, it is better. Um, it's not as improved as I had hoped, but it is definitely better than the factory shocks that were on it. Would I do it again? Yeah, for the, for the price, I probably would. Another benefit that I experienced with it is the ride inside is less rattly. So uh, things don't vibrate as much, uh, cabinetry, desk space, that sort of stuff, dash space, it's quieter. So that's a really nice benefit. Now, something that I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that you could do that didn't cost you anything and it was well worth the effort and it would probably speak to the smoothness of your ride regardless of what kind of chassis you're riding on in a motorhome is here it is you ready for this check your tire pressure now I know that sounds crazy you've got a sticker inside I've got a sticker inside let me show you what I'm talking about when I talk about that sticker Okay, so in almost all coaches, you're gonna have a sticker somewhere and it's gonna have recommended tire pressure. Now, shouldn't matter if it's a class A or a class C or even a class B. The class Bs might have them in a little bit different place, like for example, in the door jam, but they've gotta have uh, a sticker that has the recommended tire pressure. Now, in my case, this is a class A, it's a Thor on a Ford F53 chassis. We've already established all that right here on the on the sidewall right above right below my window i've got my recommended tire pressure weights now in my case i've got a dual in the back on the rear axle i've got dualies and then i've got a single on the front and it's got recommended tire pressures for both of those scenarios 
Thor on, on this coach is recommending 100 PSI per tire for all tires, okay? When I went to the manufacturer's website for the tires that I have, I found a chart, and that chart showed me, based on the weight, what the recommended tire pressure should be. Now, here's the key. You need to weigh your coach. This is a good safety thing to do anyway so that you're not overloaded because that's a very dangerous situation. And it can be as simple as just finding a CAT scale. Uh, a lot of truck stops have them. There's an app you can load on your phone. It's super simple. I never even had to get out of my coach. I drove up to the CAT scale at a truck stop, pulled open the app, parked on the designated spots, and hit the little button, and I got my weights, okay? And what I discovered was, first of all, that I'm not riding overloaded, but second, that I then took that weight, compared it to the chart on the tire manufacturer's website, which in my case was Michelin, and I'm pretty overinflated on my tires. Now, m most of these tire manufacturers are gonna want you to get what they call a corner weight, and that is not just the weight of that axle, but the weight at each corner. And the reason for that is because in most RVs, they are not balanced symmetrically. For example, you might have a bed that's on one side of the coach and nothing to counter that weight directly across from it. Or your water holding tank may be full and it may be sitting on one side of the coach, right? And not in the middle. So if you call the cat scale location in advance, a lot of them will have you park in a certain way on the scales where you can actually get corner weight. Might cost you a little bit more to do that because technically they're taking more weight measurements than you would if you just drove up on the scale. In my case, I just drove up on the scale and it cost me $12 and it was well worth it. But here's the key. Go look up your tires, get the information off your sidewall, take a picture if you need to, take that to that tire manufacturer's website, and then look up what they recommend for tire pressure. The reason for that is because if you just go by the sticker, that sticker doesn't know the exact weight of your coach. But if you carry the exact weight of your coach to the chart that you can find on the tire manufacturer's website, it's gonna give you a better recommendation. In my case, it was recommended that I be between 75 and 80. Um, actually, at my weight rating, which was a little bit below my gross uh, vehicle weight ratio, I could have gone 70. The sticker over here says 100. So I was roughly 30 pounds overweight, or I mean over pressure, right? So hopefully you see where I'm going with this. If you've got those tires inflated to the point that they're that stiff, and you don't need all that extra pressure, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to probably have a bumpier ride. You're going to have a stiffer ride. And you can actually wear the center line down that tire, down that tread, prematurely because the tires are overinflated, right? N may not be a bad idea to go check the tread while you're looking at the tire. Make sure it's even across, all the way across the tread, right? If you have access to a tread depth gauge, not a bad idea, those are pretty cheap, 10, $15, check it. If you're seeing wear on the outsides more so than in the center, it's probably under, uh, under inflated. If you're seeing wear right down the middle, you're probably over inflated. But here's the key guys, and this is the, the, the best free tip you're gonna get today go to that tire manufacturer's website and look at their recommendations based on those weights or corner weights. Inflate based on that, and you're gonna have a better, more optimal ride than you would by just going by that sticker. Okay guys, so surprise, we got into a little bit more than just shocks in this video, but all this stuff is important. And like I said in the beginning, some stuff in here that's either free or very inexpensive to check. Were the shocks worth it? You betcha. But if you don't have the money to do that right now, certainly go into the tire pressure stuff, check some of that. It'll make a big difference, I promise. And on that note, I want to say thanks for watching, everybody. If this video has been helpful or you think it's been helpful, please consider giving us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, hit that subscribe button, and you'll hear about it the next time we release one of these videos. We've got a podcast and so much other great inf info and entertainment on our website. You can find that at partscounterguru.com. Until next time, everybody, my name is Keith. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the campsites.